here's, here's some dark scenes that are, I mean, all this is Dolby Vision footage, but I mean, here's, Dol uh, here's standard dynamic range video, and this is Dolby Vision video captured, which wow. is HDR, and it's 16.7 million shades of color versus over a billion shades of color. Um, and you can see this color depth helps capture really bright scenes and really dark scenes at the exact same time. So you can get all of the shades in between and you get more detail in every frame. Um, so it's gonna let you just see more and experience more. And it's these, absolutely beautiful. These two devices are the same, but with the yeah. feature turned on and off? Correct. Okay. Yeah, correct. And the screens on the devices? Or what yeah, that's, that's... Uh, these are 2K displays. And they're, uh, but they're both uh, Dolby Vision certified and tuned. So they're both the same screens as well? 100% the same okay. screen. You know what, I can hear you. You want me to bring up this footage? I, I believe uh, you. Yeah, okay, I trust okay. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you can, um, yeah, go for it. do you guys worry about um, features being confusing? Like, like for instance, just, just that this worked with 4K60, right? Okay. And now you're introducing 8K30, but this feature doesn't work with that. So, like, right. do, do you worry that that consumers might not understand why this doesn't work with that? Um, because it was a thing when 4K came out and, yeah, and yeah. stabilization didn't work. You know what I mean? So, uh, so being at the bleeding edge of technology. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're creating new technology. We're creating new features. <laughs> hey, it's our job to explain all these things. And right. also, you know, we're giving everything that you're, you could have maybe five years from now, we're giving you today. So it's understandable that people might not know exactly so what these features are. So that's what we're here for, to help explain and showcase okay. uh, the features. But here you see it very clearly with the two phones. Yeah, and I mean, here, everybody knows Dolby. Yes. You know, and it's like, and there's Dolby displays everywhere now. And so this stuff can play, now you can play all this stuff back on your displays, you can take advantage of that. Will and you be recording your videos in 8K30 or 4K Dolby Vision? So that's a great question. I think it depends. <laughs> really? Like, hey, you know, it's like sometimes you want 8K, sometimes you just want absolute maximum color in your. Frame. I gotta say, looking at this, I think I'd be recording in 4K uh, Dolby Vision. This, yeah, Dolby Vision. Um, I mean, it's so this is standard versus Dolby Vision, right? Can, can you um, do you have a demo with its uh, like HDR10 plus versus Dolby Vision? Uh, we do not. We do not. But we have some HDR10 plus right here. Not over here. We're not breathing. We're talking fire. about Luas. This is recording in 8K. <laughs> okay. It's the 8K device. First mobile phone recording 8K. Uh, and those devices in the back are streaming via Wi Fi. These, oh. these devices are streaming. They're, they're streaming 4K, but they're streaming uh, in Wi Fi 6 here and Wi Fi 5 here. And you can see okay. the results here. Yep. Okay. Um, to why would you need uploads uh, in your mind? And my friend Caleb would love to tell you more about this. <laughs> tell me much. all about this. Yeah. But if you notice, this is practically real life capture here. Wow. Live streaming, and then this is competitors and how much slower it is. So. So last year at Tech Summit with Snapdragon 855, we announced for the first time up to 8x8 multi-user MIMO on the downlink. Right. And so we can support up to eight simultaneous download data streams. Now with Snapdragon 865, we're taking it to another step, and now we support up to eight streams simultaneous uplink traffic. So with a larger number of two-way traffic, you're at a concert, you're at a sporting event, a lot of people are trying to uplink simultaneously. Um, efficiency on the uplink traffic becomes more and more important. So imagine my kid is at a concert right now, a recital of some kind, and my, my wife is uploading that traffic so I don't miss out while I'm here in Maui, right? Yeah. So if my wife, a lot of other parents are also uploading that traffic. So if I, if my wife has a Snapdragon 865 based device, mm -hmm. so that's the type of experience I can wow. expect. Wow, yeah. If my wife has any other device that doesn't have a my well, this is the kind of experience I can expect in a congested environment. You can see it, like you see the difference, it's very clear. Um, it's like bad versus good. It's not even. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even like you have to look at both at the same time to right. see uh, what's what's going wrong. So the thing in, it, but, in modern networks, we really have to focus on capacity, right? Because there, it's, yeah. it's no more the case of you're just trying to maximize performance to one, two, or three devices. Now we're trying to maximize performance to dozens, if not hundreds, of devices simultaneously. Okay. And so this is a, we've, we've simulated a highly congested environment. And so with a lot of people uploading it simultaneously, challenging content, rich content. It was very important to have these kind of efficiency. Was this, was this recorded with a... Yes. That was recorded with this device over here? Yeah. This is an ACT. Nice. So where, 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 is the, where was this filmed? Arizona. Arizona. Why not Maui? 
<laughs> it could, <laughs> it would have made a lot more sense. You know. Yes. <laughs> it's a simulated Maui inside Maui. Um, cool. Does uh, does the 8K video recording support any kind of HDR like HDR10 plus? I know it's not. It doesn't no, support Dolby Vision. No, I don't think so. It's just okay. 8K. Just 8K30. I think it goes to HDVC, but no, no HDR okay. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Nice work. Okay, so it got it got you moving a little bit, so let's just bring it in. You can move it. Yeah, you can. Oh, you just can't. Oh shoot. Oh, but you can't move it earlier. That's weird. We we can. Let's see. <laughs> it only works when you do. Oh, you can. Is with the game colorless and this without the game colorless. The GCP, the, the game colorless. Okay. Oh, cool. What what game are we? This is uh, just a demo, a Fortnite demo. Fortnite. Okay. But it's a demo version, not the actual game. Well, I wouldn't know the difference, so. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see the difference. Yeah, sometimes I'm not sure if it's actually going to pick it up on the video. Then. Yeah, because um, like also it depends on like if you're running like a HDR10, um, if the device supports HDR10, and right. if the demo is a HDR10, and if your device doesn't have the HDR10, then you you would lose all this. <laughs> right, all the extra colors. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't. changes depending on the lighting effects so like if you see like it oh. brightens up wait oh wow so, uh -oh, I'll show it again. so on this side so if you're in a bright scene you know the basically the color you know the background changes wow <laughs> that's actually that's very cool i that's really interesting all right so so what types of how many games do you expect to support features like this? Or does this just well, happen this automatically a, in yeah. games? No, this is the game, the game, the gaming guys doesn't have to do anything. This is, right. we are doing everything for them. Oh, so, wow. So these are all the features that are available. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Thanks. Then if we stop any of them, let's say we stop 5G, then 4G will go take over. So whenever we start, we stop, start, they, they share. So it's the same, same frequency used by both. Uh, and uh, yeah, this per periodic is just to send random. I, instead of clicking all the time, we have some different traffic running here and here, and then they can adjust. So, so, so this is for a solution for the, the operator. 
when you have these speeds, is when you can just make this happen. See, look at, the, the problem is they haven't still defined how they're going to charge you for it. <laughs> what we have right. seen is a, a lot of correlation between 5G and unlimited data plans. So let's say, let's, let's start again, right? Okay. <laughs> so we are uh, now in, in the airport in Phoenix, Arizona, after our trip to Sedona, okay. and we want to share uh, with in our blog uh, some of our great footage that we capture in 8K using the Snapdragon 865 mobile platform. So I will start building my video here. I have just a title here. I will add the 4K video to the project. Wait, 4K? The 8K. Oh, okay. Okay. 4, 4K it was like 500 years ago. That's, yes, no, it's 8K. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I this correctly. Yes. Okay. So my friend who helped me with this blog, he's in New York. Mm -hmm. He can just go and add it in a sec. And continue the editing. So wow. he will add, let's say, an ad and an end tag here. Perfect. He says that the video is ready for me to approve from Phoenix, Arizona for publication in AK. Okay. Let's say. I'll go back to Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, it has everything, <laughs> but I just noted that it for, he forgot to include the caption that I wanted. I want you really, people to know that this is. Sedona in a K. So all oh, this to the full scene here. Find this text. I'll synchronize and right. going back to New York. Let's see. Now it has the caption, wow. everything is ready. So this now is start being rendered <laughs> in the cloud. Cool. And I check my flood. Collaborative and video run, editing. It's ready, the Over. video. Collaborative video editing in 5G, 8, or in 8K. 8K with 5G. That's, That's what we're um, talking about, is how the, with 5G, create this interface to the cloud. Yeah. That allows you to use the unlimited processing right. and unlimited uh, storage that you have there. Yeah. And create it in, in smoothly. Because you can you can use particularly millimeter wave. That's very cool. Multi gigabits so, per second. So when does does millimeter wave can it just come to more places though? You know, because right now since I think Verizon and AT and T, I think T Mobile has it in very yes. select spots. Yes. Um, the way I put it, like, when, when am I going to get it on Long Island where I live? You know what I, mean? I, I don't know exactly Long Island, but what, what, what you know I why know? I use Long Island as a residence? Not because yes. it's where I live. It's because I'm close to New York City, but I'm outside of New York City. Yes. So I am not like it's it's the tri-state area. It's still a heavily populated area, mm -hmm. but we're not going to be at the same priority as major cities. So this stuff takes a while to roll out, right? Yes. Well, five so G is eight months old since the first network launch. It's what? Eight months old. Yes. And the network will continue deploying millimeter wave, right, in, in, in new areas, along with sub-6 as well, right? right? Next year we'll see networks using both millimeter wave and sub-6 for coverage and millimeter wave for capacity. We also expect millimeter wave going into new regions, Europe, mm -hmm. South Korea, yeah. Japan, next year, and later into many other countries overall. Right. So when will be in Long Island? I can tell well, you. I don't mean Long Island specifically. I mean places like Long Island, places like outskirts that, of the cities that, where it's being built. That's out. a great question you know? for uh, the operators. Uh, yes. I, 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 I know. I know. I know. Plans. I know. I but think... what I know is that as next year we continue expanding. We will see the combination of both sub six and millimeter wave, and we'll go beyond the U.S. to other countries as well. Yeah. I, I, I'm just wondering when, when it's it's going to be in those. It's where it's going to be pretty much everywhere. You know, and when I say everywhere, I don't mean like like rural areas that are just going to take a while. Um, just generally where people Remember are. That, that 5G is conceived 
to be a, this combination of sub six and millimeter spectrum. Yeah. So millimeter wave, you might see that right. in areas where you require significant capacity. Yeah. Indoor venues, like here, right? I was working all these days. You connect to the millimeter wave network, and it's great, right? You don't get any. You re get really connected. Yeah. Uh, stadiums, the millimeter wave. Yes. <laughs> stadiums and all kind of concert venues, other high capacity venues. We see also millimeter way going indoors for enterprises mm. where the strong capacity is required and those yeah, connectivity okay. capabilities are required. But broadly, the coverage will be connected um, with sub six spectrum right. over. Let's say the way it has been conceived. See, I'm a T-Mobile user, so I should be able to get it. Uh, that should be pretty much everywhere, right? With the 600, the low bands. With the low bands, yes. 600 you, megahertz. You, you, you see things like a dynamic spectrum sharing or yeah. just allocation of the spectrum for sub six. Yeah. You can see broad coverage. Right. We, we, we expect to see uh, next year nationwide coverage for multiple operators and multiple countries overall. So, so if I'm just a regular consumer, I'm just using my device. Um, there's no indicator to show if I'm connecting to, to sub six that's gonna get me a couple hundred mega, megabits per second versus if I'm connecting the millimeter wave that's getting me what you just showed, which is about 1.7 gigabits per second, yeah, which is- Two or more. Right? Yeah, right, right. So, so um, do, you, do you anticipate that customers might kind of wonder why sometimes it's faster than others? Uh, I, I don't expect that that going into the consumer level. Yeah. Just to think with LTE, with LTE, you don't have indicator if you are in LTED, FDD, or GDD. Right. Okay. You don't have yeah. indicator if you're using LAA and license spectrum complementing the, the 4G or not. Yeah. You see, overall, you expect a consistent experience. That's and carriers true. will use all those tools. And you know what? Sometimes it's not consistent, right? So even on LTE, sometimes, sometimes I have four bars of LTE and it's slow because I'm in a congested area. Sometimes I have one bar of LTE in the space. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. But but cool. we expect that at the end, what people would notice is that with 5G, you have a more consistent connectivity for right. the use cases. For when you want to do an HD video call, or when you can just do, do, download your video very quickly for yeah. your movie, or you want to do these kind of collaborative projects that use the cloud, mm -hmm. it just will work. Okay. Hello. Um, so, so my question, I, I, have, I have many questions about this, right? So, so this is coming in Android R, right? Um, and this is gonna work with what, just state driver's licenses? It's, the goal would be in any type of ID, right? Uh, but yes. Um, well, that will do that. So, 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 well, I mean, I mean, the, there's... That was you on stage, right? No, Jesse. Oh, it was Jesse. Jesse. I okay. wish she'd come I, back because um, she could talk. She's right, so so she used the, the example of um, forgetting your ID when you go to the airport. So this would work at the airport then? Once it's implemented and states, right. states, <laughs> I mean, states have integrated because, it, yes. Okay, so states have to, to integrate it. It's not just going to um, work everywhere. Because like it, the, the difference in this and say... Like mobile banking, you're working with banks, right? Mobile payments, you're working with banks. This is something where you'd have to work with governments. Uh, so, so if you're doing this with passports, you'd have to, because that that means what? You have to work with federal government. Right. All federal governments. <laughs> you have to accept it. Um, and the same thing that that would mean it would have to work with visas as well. So I mean, like, there's a big scope here that that's it was very briefly mentioned. Yes, there is. So so. The plan is to get all that to work. Yes. Eventually. Yes. Right. Okay. But you could you could see how that would be more of an Android issue than it would be a chipset issue. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so wait for Jesse to come back. Is what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> we would implement those requirements. To your point, would there be 50 different states worth of requirements? Hopefully not. But I'm sure there's right. not going to just be a minute amount of information. And what you're going okay. to have. It show up is whether you check yes this person's good to go no mm -hmm. something's wrong with this person right so they wouldn't even have to verify stuff they just scan and check but they're just scanning a QR code what's yeah. what's what's stopping me a um a young 22 year old uh, from, from from screenshotting it from screenshotting it and sending it to my even younger 17 year old cousin that wants to get into a bar yeah um, you know? Jesse could talk to you about that. <laughs> But, so there, there would be ways to verify, is it a screenshot, is it, is okay. it a live connection, all those ways. Jessica can talk to you.